Late in 2000, Star, now Star Scientific, introduced its own cigarette called Advance, the first to be made with low nitrosamine Virginia tobacco. The company also had a new chief operating officer, Paul Perito, a Harvard-trained lawyer and Washington insider. Neither we nor anybody else can manufacture a safe cigarette. We do believe that we can manufacture a cigarette that does deliver less toxins, and we are hopeful that this will someday be shown through scientific research. It will take years because the onset of cancer takes years. Star Tobacco, it's an intriguing company. <laughs> I think, if anything, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, a, you know, it's a needle in the side of the big guys making them do things they wouldn't normally do unless you had star out there. And, and what it does, it provides a healthy dose of competition for safer products. Whether or not they're really safer, I think, is the big $64,000 question. Keep in mind, we have 42 other carcinogens in cigarette smoke. The reason cigarettes have so many toxins is that they burn. Any organic material like tobacco is chemically complex. Combustion increases the complexity enormously. With heat peaking at 1,000 degrees centigrade, the 300 or so compounds that make up tobacco explode into over 5,000. Tobacco behind the burning cone heats up and releases gases, including carbon monoxide, one of the deadliest components of automobile exhaust. Drawing on the cigarette pulls the gases and microscopic particles of incomplete combustion called tar into the mouth and lungs. Over time, they wreak havoc on the delicate lungs and cardiovascular systems. First, carbon monoxide passes through the lungs into the blood where it binds so vigorously with hemoglobin that it displaces the oxygen these cells normally carry to nurture tissue throughout the body. The heart is forced to work harder, which can damage the circulatory system. The gases also devastate the tiny hair-like filaments along the airway, called cilia. Normally, they move contaminants out of the lungs, Without them, the tar remains, causing lung cells to multiply and tissue to thicken. Gradually, the lungs lose elasticity, and chronic bronchitis and emphysema can develop. And finally, there's cancer. Carcinogens like nitrosamines interact with DNA creating mutant genes that cause the uncontrolled cell growth that is the hallmark of cancer. You won't find it on the death certificate, but one vital factor in Jim's death was this. The relationship between smoking and health did not become clear until the early 1950s. Smoking had been suspect for years, but new studies revealed a statistical correlation between smoking and lung cancer. Then it was found that mice painted with cigarette tar developed tumors. The tobacco industry was caught off guard. The stock dropped immediately. People started quitting immediately. Uh, within the first week after that paper, the salesmen were panicked. Uh, so the, the companies got their heads together and had a secret meeting in New York to decide what's, what do we do? How do we handle this? We can't just sit and watch the business slide from under us. A massive public relations campaign was launched to raise questions about the validity of the scientific studies and to promote positive notions about smoking. At the same time, they knew there was a problem, and so they were going to work on that secretly. 
If there was something in a cigarette that caused cancer, they wanted to get it out. This is the P. Laurelard plant in Greensboro, North Carolina, the world's most modern cigarette factory. Here, new and dramatic... While scientists at the major tobacco companies struggled to identify and remove carcinogens, the small and struggling Laurelard Tobacco Company found a quick and marketable approach to the problem. In 1952, Laurelard launched Kent's, featuring a rarity in those days, a filter tip. By capturing tar particles before they reached the lungs, the filter would seem to create a safer smoke. If you're that one out of every three smokers who is affected by nicotine and tars, then Kent's Micronite filter is the one answer for you. In fact, it's the greatest health protection you can get in a cigarette. Now, I want you to watch this. Fibers of a special filter material were said to be so thin they could trap tar particles as small as one micron, one two thousandth of an inch. Look, there it is. An ugly stain from the hot, harsh irritants that come right through this other filter. But through Kent's Micronite filter, there's hardly a trace. Unfortunately, the new filter had a unique problem of its own. The filtering agent in Kent was Crisidolite asbestos, which was known at the time to be a cause of cancer. In 1954, the Laurelard Company commissioned several studies to see if asbestos fibers ended up in the cigarette smoke. Each of the labs that reported back to the company that indeed there was asbestos in the smoke. The tests were kept secret. Sales set industry records. During the past year, Kent cigarettes showed a sales increase of over 20 billion cigarettes. This is the greatest gain in popularity ever recorded by any filter cigarette in any year. Three years later, Lorillard introduced new Kents with a new Micronite filter, this time asbestos-free. In recent years, there have been a number of cases of mesothelioma, a cancer that is essentially only caused by asbestos exposure in people whose only credible exposure to asbestos was the original Kent cigarettes that they smoked in the 1950s. As Kent's took off, a more sophisticated effort to selectively remove toxins was pursued by the Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company, makers of Chesterfields and L&Ms. In the early 1960s, scientists involved in a secret project codenamed XA reported that mixing tobacco with a combination of chemicals altered the chemistry of combustion, reducing carcinogens in the smoke. A key ingredient was palladium, a metal commonly used in automobile catalytic converters. By the mid-1970s, the product was ready for market, but it would never get there. Lawyers throughout the industry came down hard on Liggett. They said a safer cigarette would imply that something was wrong with those already on the market and would lead to endless, devastating liability suits. The XA project was quietly abandoned, as were similar efforts by other tobacco companies. And time after time, and this is the 1960s, the 1970s, the early 1980s, each time one of these scientists came up with a modification that could have reduced risk, they saw their efforts either scuttled and, and, and put on a shelf, and in some instances they saw themselves being let go by the companies. Liggett and Myers was purchased in 1985 by the maverick financier Bennett LeBeau, who added it to his roster of companies the Vector Group. Financially, it's very good. I mean, the profit margins are very high. And I hate to say it, the customers are, are somewhat addicted. 
So, you know, on that basis, you can look at it as uh, financially being very uh, attractive. Interest in the abandoned XA cigarette was revived when Dr. John Bunch was hired, the company's first scientist in years. A longtime secretary suggested that Dr. Bunch examine records of the project. He managed to retrieve a batch of prototype cigarettes in a storage freezer and brought in a senior chemist from the University of North Carolina who had been his teacher. I was asked to read the patents and uh, I was surprised that nobody had followed up on it if it was good as the patents claimed to be. Tar from the prototype cigarettes was collected on a smoking machine. Carcinogenic compounds were extracted and their quantities compared to normal tobacco. And we saw some evidence that was interesting. Clearly something was happening. Working in the old Liggett lab, Dr. Berriman and a handful of energetic young scientists analyzed the original XA formula and set out to improve it. Palladium and other additives were used to alter the burn at the molecular level in a way that would trap or prevent the formation of harmful compounds. In this case, the target was a deadly group of carcinogens known as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs. These carcinogens are created during combustion when reactive compounds called radicals, created by the heat, combine to form harmful PAH compounds like the solvent benzene, naphthalene, and benzoapyrene. It is a very complex chemistry. We recognize that if we change one reaction, we do affect something else. You try a catalyst that remove the pHs, you may be increasing something else that you have to worry about then again. As it turned out, the chemicals that reduced pAHs produced an increase in nitrosamines, the carcinogens that can form during the curing of tobacco. Vector scientists went to work on a new additive to reduce these compounds. It's like working on any puzzle that you don't know the answer to. If you know the answer, it's no fun. And it's exciting, and I, I think we're going to do it. Vector's new cigarette, Omni, is scheduled to reach the market this year. Here's a little company, you know, uh, Vector or, you know, or Liggett here, that we've, over the years, past 10 years, have had one scientist. And I feel in the past three years, we've developed some major breakthroughs in the tobacco business. And you got to sit back and ask yourself, the other companies have 400 scientists, 500 scientists each. What have they been doing the past 20 or 30 years? <laughs>